Hey everybody, peace and blessings be to you. This is Courtney Jones, and today, hey, we're having fun. Um, we're going through the Jesus Chronicles. Now, I already sent off one that I did, uh, I sent the one off I told you I sent off yesterday, and it was the one about, of course, we was companion Quran, and we was going through the Torah, which is the Old Testament, the Torah, the Gospel, the New Testament, and the Quran. Because what we're trying to find out is that we're trying to find out what's the truth about a lot of things. And by me going through the Quran, I found out they have some form of truth, but they don't have the Spirit of God. They're not accepting the Spirit of God the way they're supposed to. Without the Spirit of God, you cannot be uh, you cannot be a child of God without the Spirit of God. You can follow all the rules and regulations you like, but if you do not have the Holy Spirit in you, you're not born again, you cannot have of uh, the Spirit of God. So what I want to do on that point before I start, I want to get to that. Now we'll go to John chapter 3. Go to John chapter 3, verse 4. Since the Quran says you have to listen to the gospel of the Lord as well as the New Testament, they understand it. These came out before he did. So, let me show you this much. Now, what do you mean? Uh, this is what he said. What do you mean, said Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, Esau, Reply, I, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born again, without being born of water and the Spirit. Now, that being said, that shows you right there. Now, let's find out who Esau is to them in the Quran. Let's find out who's, who was Esau in there. When the angel said, Oh, Miriam, Allah, Allah gives you the good news with the word from him that you will be given a son. His name will be the his name will be Messiah, Esau, the son of Mary, of Miriam. He will be noble in this world and the hereafter, the afterworld. And he will be from those who are very close to Allah. He will speak to people in the cradle and in his old age, and he will be among the righteous. So they understand that he is the Messiah, and that's what we were going through yesterday to show them, okay, so you believe he's the Messiah of God. Okay, now, you just heard him say in the Gospels, if you are not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. Now, it says right here was very interesting. He will speak to the people in the cradle and in the and in his old age. So you know most people you talk to that's Muslim or that, that knows this. The first thing they say is that oh he was able to speak to people when he was in. A, listen, he was in a he was in a he was talking to people when he was in a cradle, like you know he was a baby. That's not how that happened. That's not how that works. He was not talking when he was an infant as a baby talking. I'm going to show you how that works. This is what the Holy Spirit comes in hand. Now, it says he will speak to people in the cradle and in his old age, and he will be among the righteous. He will speak to people in the cradle or the manger and in his old age. Now, his old age don't mean he's an old man. It means he's grown. Now, I'm going to show you this, because this is why the Quran needs to go back to the Gospels that it came from, that it copied everything out of. This is why it needs to come back to it, because if you stay there, you're not going to find out the rest of what that means. And this is why you need the Spirit of God, and then you need the Word of God, so you can see the Word and the Spirit makes, that's what born, you're born again, that's what it does. Now, we're going to find out what that means. Now, see, another thing, I'm going to show something to a lot of people. This is going to be some good revelations going to go down. And God wants this to come out because he take, He wants he want them to understand that, you know what, that they need to receive the Holy Spirit, you see. He wants them to get them to understand that. Because, see, the thing is that they don't, they understand that God has the Holy Spirit. They understand that they should accept Esau as the Messiah, but they don't understand that if they don't, that they don't be born again. They don't receive Esau. They can't get the they can't get the inner Holy Spirit. They can't get the Holy Spirit there. And it, and because it's gonna come in his name. Now 
They don't understand this. So they're living without the Holy Spirit. And when you live without the Holy Spirit, then you can be deceived by the devil. And you can be deceived by anything else. Like most of these people, that, that they, they are not taking this serious and not following the Holy Spirit, so they're being deceived. But I want them to understand this. Now, one of the biggest mysteries that's been in in the Bible is that people never understood why did Matthew and, for Matthew and Luke, why did they have two different births? Why was it, why was it two different births? That, uh, that Jesus had. You know, one story says that he was, one story says that it was wise men came, and the other story said it was some shepherds back there that came. Another thing it says that one says that it was a small, it was a, it was a young child. It was a little child, a young child. The other one said it was a baby in the manger. Two different things. And so people been debating this for a long time. I remember seeing people, uh, even these people that think that they're historians, Bible historians, and they were saying all kind of foolishness I heard them say, and see, that's what happens. See, when people think they're so wise about the Holy Spirit, they're, they're so far lost, it ain't funny. And these guys who think they know some things, they didn't know anything. And I heard all kind of things. But see, the thing is that this is, what, this is why God is your teacher. So he can teach you these things. This is one of the reasons you need the Spirit of God. Now, the reason why, let's go find this out first of all. And we're in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed and with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they kneeled down and paid him homage, or some try like to say worship him. Then, of course, they opened up their treasure chest and their offerings and gifts and, and everything else. Now, when they came, when they entered in the house, they saw a small, they saw a child, okay, a small child. Sometimes they saw a little child. Now, when they saw this child, this is a little child, not a baby, okay, not a baby, but a little child. Okay, now let's go to Luke. Now, remember that, it was a little child. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse, three, uh, verse 5. Actually, I'm going to come further down. I'm going to go to verse 5. Actually, I mean verse 10. I'm sorry. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, for see, that's the word see, meaning see, always believe. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in a band of cloth and lying in a manger, or you can say a cradle. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God, to the highest heavens, and on earth, pray, uh, on earth peace among those who he favored, or peace among man, some translation. Now, I'm in the Catholic translation just to show them as well. Uh, now, we go to the 15th. When the angel had left them and gone, to, uh, gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. Now, in this translation, the Catholic is saying the child in the manger. Other translations are going to say he found the baby in the manger. Man with the baby, baby in the manger. Now, this is what I'm talking about right here. Now, we know for a fact, okay, now we have a baby that's in the manger. So we have a, a, a baby in the manger, and we have a little child. And they bow down to the little child and start worshiping him. Now, what is that about? That's the question. What is that about? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Now, why did they have two different stories? Why they had wise men found a little child, and um, and uh, why had a wise man found a little child, and why why did they have shepherds find a little baby in a manger? Why they had two different stories? at the same time. Okay, I'm going to tell you what. Go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. 
go to Isaiah. We go to Isaiah. We go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. The wolf shall live. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the child. Or some translations say the young child. The calf and the lion and the fat lion together. And a little child shall lead them. Now here we go, that little child. Remember the little child again. Remember the little child in Matthew. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall gate graves. Their young shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child, the nursing child, okay, the nursing child. Now, see, the Catholic book keeps using child, so we're going to have to probably go to another translation. They keep using child on mostly everything. Now, we got to get the right translation of that because in all the other translations, it's the infant. It's the, it's the infant. It's the nursing infant shall play over the hole of the, uh, the serpent or the hole of the snake, it would say. But what we're going to do, we're going to find another translation of it because we want to make sure, and that's why Catholic folks are already, uh, that's why they are already, you know, being deceived. They can't even do a Bible correct with. Um, and see, stuff like that is hidden just to trick people with certain things people won't know the complete truth. Now, here we go. The calf, okay, we're going back down. And the calf, okay, we went to that part, the calf, okay, the cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like a cow. Instead of oxen here, it said cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in the nest of, deadly, of a deadly snake without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. This is what God's saying. Now, what we have here, we have, first we have a little child. And the little child is walking. The little child is walking with the wolf, the wolf, the bear, I mean the bear cub, the wolf, the bear, all this stuff going on, the wolf, the bear, all these things. Now, what there are a constellation. See, now i got to get a little bit, you know, uh, we got to go to the stars a little bit now. Now, in the constellations, everybody know the zodiacs, and the zodiacs, okay, it's animals in the zodiacs. And the zodiacs all ran by, the zodiacs all running by the sun, okay? And so what happens, everybody know anything about the zodiacs, the constellations? It's a little child that's leading all the zodiacs, okay? Now, that's, this is saying the same thing. Isaiah is saying the same thing because I told people before, there will be no reason for people to change the Bible. All God would do is go to the stars. That's why we need somebody to take the Spirit of God and go to the stars, and, he, and, and God would just show them that. There will be no sense of, uh, of, you know, some of the people who feel that he made the Quran because he was going to change the thing. There was no sense. The stars can't change. No one can change the constellation of stars or anything. No one can go up there and do that. That's why God put it up there where no one can touch it. Now, the thing is that the little child, we have the little child, okay? Now, we have the little child and we have the infant. Now, what I want you to understand is the reason why that's that way because you have to become a child first. You have to be a little child. Jesus said, humble yourself as a child, okay? Then he told you that if you don't humble yourself as a child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, but he also told you that the per the perfect praise comes from the babes, the babies, the infants. So you have to go through the stage of being a child to being an infant. That's the way it works in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, you have to be a child, and then God takes you from being seven years to seven years old child. He takes you from being seven to, to six to five, to you a baby, when well, you don't do anything. Why? Because a baby, the perfect praise comes from the baby, because the baby don't know nothing. The baby just sits there, is at the mercy of his parents. Okay. Now let me show you what I mean. 
Then we go to Isaiah 9, chapter 6. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. Now, what I want you to understand is that what Jesus was, was he was a grown man. He was a grown man that was a baby. He was humble to God. He did whatever God wanted God to do. Whatever God wanted to do, he did. He was a body. He did whatever God wanted to do. Now, let's go somewhere else with this. Let's go to Job chapter 3. Now, remember, it said that he will be able to put his hand, the, the, the infant baby. See, the infant, when he gets an infant, when he becomes an infant, he can do whatever. That's when he's completely grown in God. Okay? That's why... It say he can put his hand into the snake mouth. Okay? Now, who, who's the snake? The serpent is. Who the serpent is? The serpent is the devil. But I'm going to get back to that. Let's go here to Job 3. Let me show you what I mean. Job chapter 3, verse 3. Let the day perish in which I was born, and the night that said a man child is conceived or born. Now, let's wind that back. Let the day perish in which I was born, and the night that said a man child is conceived. See, Job and them all knew the same thing. Job told you, I know I have a redeemer. I know I have a Messiah. He knows this. This, this stuff is all in the Torah. And this is for the Jews, because God wants y'all to understand that too. So y'all keep on denying. And to Jews and Jehovah's Witnesses, y'all keep denying who Jesus is. You keep denying him because he's a stumbling block for y'all. So if you don't wake up and find, you don't wake up, open your eyes to the truth of this, you're going to find yourself in hell. Because you think you can hide behind the whole fact or think that you can hide behind the whole thing of, oh, we the children of God. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you believe that. And uh, it's a whole lot of y'all already in hell right now with yarmulke hats burning in hell right now, thinking that way. I'm telling you the truth. So, you know, you can think that way, but I'm going to tell you something. You think that you can be evil? You think you can be evil? You think you can serve a false god and use God's name? You think you can steal? You think you can lie? And you think that you can have innocent people blood on you? You think you can charge interest, eat blood with the meaning? You think you can do those things and you're going to enter the kingdom? Because you think that you're some child Abraham. Well, you know what? You're going to find out the hard way. You're going to find out the hard way. So for the Jews who is listening or the Jehovah Witnesses who just, just don't know no better and see they can't read the scriptures because they don't have the Spirit of God. So just like the Muslims don't have it, they don't have it. But at least the Muslims understand that Jesus is the Messiah, Esau the Messiah. They get that part. But Jehovah Witnesses won't do that. They say we don't, we don't, oh yeah, we don't, you know, we don't claim the cross. We don't claim that. Well, you're going to go to hell for not claiming it. And if you think I'm joking, you'll find out. You'll find yourself in, uh, in hell. But anyway, now, going back to what I'm saying. Let the day perish in which I was, which was born and the night that said a man child is conceived. See, that's the whole point. That's what Jesus was. He was a man child. That's the whole thing about it. He was submissive as a child to God. That's what we have to understand. We got to understand that, you see. He went through both stages. That's why in the stars, it is, in the stars, it's a little child and it's a baby playing. Now, why is the baby playing with this? The baby can put his hand into the snake mouth and it won't hurt him. Well, see, now we got to go easy. You're going to get some more revelation now that you probably didn't have. You're going to find out. So we got to go to Exodus. We got to go to Exodus. Go back to the, to, to the tour. We got to go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Now, if anybody know anything out there, if I also got to break this down as well. If anybody know anything, the Word of God, the Word of God is a staff. Okay? When you hear those guys like Moses say, all I have is a staff, the staff is the Word of God. When he put the cork on, the cork is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, we can go through so many scriptures where these guys put the cork on. And Elijah had put the cork on, the mantle, the mantle on, the jacket, whatever you want to call it. And then they would be considered like a jacket or whatever. Well, it's the same thing. 
okay? They put this on. Job said, I put on my robe. In his time, it was a robe. I put on my robe of righteousness, okay, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, here we are right here. When Exodus chapter 2, when I watch what God say to Moses, then the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, God said to him, throw it on the ground. So he threw the staff on the ground, and it became a snake. You understand what I'm saying? Now you have to see this. It became a snake, and Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand. And seize it by the tail. Now, now think about this. Who in the world is going to throw, 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 throw a, a staff down and it turns to a snake and you're going to grab a snake by the tail? You grab a snake by its tail like this here, he's going to straight, he's going to come right back and bite you. No, there's, there's no way, it's not going to happen that way. The only way a snake won't bite you unless he's afraid of you, seriously. Afraid. And usually when they're in fear, that's when they bite. But, I mean, to the point where they're submissive. Okay? And you got all the snake charmers in the world. And, but the same token, you can't play that way. Now, I'm going to show you something. Now, the staff is the word of God. So one thing the Bible shows you is that every time somebody throw down the word, like Jonah, God gave him the word. Hey, listen, go over here and talk to the, uh, you know, go over here and tell him, go over there and talk to Nineveh. He didn't listen. He went out the presence of God. All of a sudden, here comes the serpent. He come the, the sea serpent, okay? He come the storm coming, and he come the sea serpent to swallow him up. Or the old translation says sea beast, the sea serpent. But the new translation people say a whale. But okay, you have the serpent comes. Look at look at uh, Adam. Adam didn't agree with God in the beginning. Adam said, finally, finally, about time, finally. You see, when he brought God brought him Eve, he said, finally. At last, that means that he, when someone say at last, what that is saying is about time you do things my way. That's what he was saying. Because God brought him the beast of the field, which are people. He didn't want that because they weren't compatible to him. That's like Jesus with the disciples. The disciples were compatible with Jesus. That's why they was frustrating him at times. Sometimes he kept saying, oh, how long, how long I got to keep dealing with you? Because they're, they're, they are a beast of the field because they don't have the Holy Spirit yet. So it frustrated Jesus sometimes when he said things to them they didn't catch on. Like this, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. Oh, he, he, he's saying bread? He's like, no, I'm not talking about. See, it frustrated him because he's on a higher level than they are. So because they are beasts of the field at this point until they get the spirit of God. Now, God said, now if you throw down the staff, now what Adam did, what Adam did that he threw the word of God down. He didn't trust God, so he threw God down. What happened? Here comes the serpent. Here comes the serpent out of nowhere. So when they do this, here comes the serpent. The serpent comes and trick Eve. Now, the same thing happened with everything. No matter what happens, well, look at the church of Israel. When they threw the word of God down, when God told them, when they, they was crying about, oh, no, we hate the food, we hate the this, we hate the that, they throwing the word of God down. We don't want it. We this and that. We want to go back to Egypt. All of a sudden, a bunch of serpents came and started biting them. That's the point. If you throw the word down, the devil comes. It has a serpent. So the staff is the word. Now, when you're holding the staff, I mean you take, you you holding the word. You're true to the word. It stands. It's a staff. When you throw it down like it's trash, like you throw it down and talk against you, throw it on the ground, it turns to a snake. Now, when Moses threw the word down on the ground, it turned to a snake. That's what always happened to everybody all through the Bible. Here come that snake. Here come the lion. He threw the word. They threw the staff down. That's what happened. So once he threw it on the ground, it turned to a snake. Then God, then he's listening to God's words again. Here's God's words again coming out. Grab the snake by its tail or seize it by its tail. Now he's taking God's word now, and he's using God, taking God's word, and he grabbed it by the snake. And what happened? He controlled the snake because the snake is a devil. See, the sons of God control the serpent. So when the little baby is at the state we supposed to be, okay, the little baby is talking to people in his crater, his manger. That's because he, at his old age, he's a man child. You see, he's grown, but he's humble to God as a child, which you have to be. But this is what he was doing. Now, when he's, when he's at that stage, 
he's able to put his hand, what, in the devil mouth, in the snake pen. He can put his hand by the snake and play with the snake. The snake won't do anything to him because he's above it. He's in control of it. He got power over it. And that's one of the, the one of the tricks of the devil. He want to keep you being a beast. He don't want you to get to to the sons of God level. And this is the problem I have with the Quran to a certain degree is that they don't teach people the fact of the matter. They need to, you know, they don't. They tell you that you do have to understand the fact of the matter that the Torah and the Gospels was before us, and that they are holy books. They do tell you this. They do tell you that Allah is the one did the books they claim. So they saying that he's the same as. Jehovah, I am, or a sovereign law, he's the same as him, or Yahweh, he's the same. Well, okay then. Then you understand that you would have to go back to those books because those books are going to go back and forth together. They're all going to go together, that's the case. Now, so Jesus here being a man child, he's been a baby, humble, okay, but he's grown. You see, God directed everything he did. God said, go here, go there, go here, go there. Everything God said, he did. So what you have to see is that, therefore, he has power over the serpent. That's why the same thing with Moses. That's what God showing Moses, the same thing. David said the same thing. David said, listen, I took on the bear and the lion. So why, why should I be afraid of this? I'm not going to be afraid of Philistine. Now, he said, I grabbed the lion by his throat. Who's going to grow up grab a full-blooded lion by his throat? And he said, I grabbed him by his throat and took his staff and I clubbed him. Took the word and he clubbed him. Who, who won't grab a lion by his throat and a lion do nothing? A lion that's submissive, that's afraid. He also said, I took the bear by his throat. I took the bear and clubbed him. What person that walks to the bear and do that? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What person that walks to the bear and do that? See, the thing is that you understand that the bear will present the, the, the bear and the lion, they both represent rulers that rule hard over the poor. If you go to Proverbs, it tell you that. The bear and the lion, whoever, like whoever rules the poor harshly is, is like a bear and a lion. Because the bear and lion represent fear and pride. Fear and pride. See, David said, I destroyed both of those. God helped me destroy fear and pride. So I can take out the devil. He can take out Goliath, which the Philistines worship the devil. So therefore, he can take out him. Now, but I don't want to get off that and go too far on something else, but I want to get to these scriptures now. Because I want you to understand all these things. Now, we understand now where Matthew and Luke got that from. They got that from, we understand they got that from uh, um, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. So we know that's what they got it from. Okay, now we know both know Jesus, all Jesus say back and forth all day long. It's all Jesus kept saying over and over. You have to be humble as a child. He kept saying this. He kept saying the little kids. He kept saying over and over, the little kids, uh, when the disciples try to make the little kids run away, Jesus say, hey, the little kids, don't, don't take the little kids away. He say, this is who the kingdom of heaven is made for, the little children, the sons of God. That's the whole point. Now, we're going to go a little further than that because I want to make sure you get this. We're going to go, we're going to go a lot further. <laughs> we're going to go a lot further than that. So the people that's Jews can understand this as well as the, the people that's Muslim can understand this. Um, they can get the same thing. They can understand the same thing. So let's see. What are we going to go next? We've got so many scriptures <laughs> that we can go to. So we'll go to some. Go, let's go to Psalms, because I know y'all recognize, I know the Muslims, y'all recognize Psalms, and we know that the Jews recognize David and Psalms. They recognize that. So we're going to go to Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 20, Psalms chapter 26. Psalms chapter 26, verse 3. Oh, Psalms chapter, chapter 27, I'm sorry. Psalms chapter 27, verse 3. Children are a heritage from the Lord. The offspring a rewarding a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, a children are children born in one youth.
Now, we're going to go back to that again. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a heritage of the Lord. What, what is a heritage? Anybody know that? Says, you know, well, my heritage is, you see, I know y'all know what heritage means. Somebody said, well, you know, what, what, what's, your, you know, you know, what's your heritage? Oh, well, 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 you know, our heritage is who you are, what's your customs, what's your, what's, your, what's your customs, who you are, what's your genealogy, what's your genealogy, your family tree, what are all these things, what is your tradition, what is your this? See, if you're not God's children, then how can you be, if you're not God's children, then how can you have this heritage? How can you have, see, how can you have that? God has given you salvation as your inheritance. So your inheritance is salvation from God. Salvation is something God gives you, not something you earn. It's something he gives you. He gives it to his children that follows him, that obeys him. He gives it to his children. Salvation, he gives it to you. It's not something you can earn, you see. I know it's hard for, I know it's hard for people who've been in religions that been, been disciplined. I can't do this. I can't. That's not how that works. You see, what you do is you need the Spirit of God because God's going to put His laws and His rules on your heart, in your spirit. That's what it says here. You see, oh, and we're going to go through that. It's going to tell you, the Bible tells you that God did that. God put, God's going to put His whole spirit. I'm going to pour my spirit out on you. The reason why He want to pour His spirit out because people was lying about who he was. They was making up religions using his name. They was making up religion, taking some of his stuff out and other things. And people were doing this for so long that God got tired of this. So he said that I'm going to put my spirit on everyone, slaves, people that's men, women, slaves. doesn't matter. I'm going to put it on there so people can know who I am and stop taking his name, making idols out of it, stop doing this and doing that. They're doing the same thing. You know, you got people, like I said before, they took him out of the equation and they just have Jesus there and they took God out. The Father, they just took him out of the equation. You can't do that. That's insane. You can't do that. He's God, okay? Jesus is his son. He's a God, too. But what the thing is that you are God, too. You have to understand that. You are God as well, okay? And that's the thing that's hard for people to understand. Jesus is the son of God. So are the ones who are babes. So if you humble yourself, you are son of God. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the sons of God. They also say, blessed are the meek, because they should inherit the earth. The meek is the humble. Why would they inherit the earth? Because they're humble. So God can, can train them. We're going to get to that. We're going to go through all that. Now, let's go to, I'm going to stick a sum. We're going to go to Psalms 51, verse 5. Okay. Surely, I was a sin. I was sinful at birth. Sinful, sinful, for sinful for from the time my mother conceived me. Yet your desires, faithfulness. You desire faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the in that secret place. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Okay, now, yet yeah, you desire faithfulness even in the womb, being a baby. You taught me wisdom in that secret place, in the womb, being a baby, an infant. That's how you have to be. Like God say, do this. Now, David saying the same thing. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. You taught me wisdom. Now, what I want you to understand is that, and uh, so here we go, right here. We'll go back to the Quran. Go back to the Quran. Hear this, Mary said, "Oh my, oh my Lord." 
have, have, uh, how can I have a son with no man have even touched me? He replied, even so, even so, Allah creates whatever he wants.